So now in this video, we're going to look at a circuit that I've actually wanted to make for a uh, long time. Maybe I did make this before and forgot about it. But in uh, any case, we have that LED on. When I'm not pressing the switch, this is a normally open switch. So right now, the switch is off. But we have this 10 kilo ohm resistor coming to the switch, going to this diode, which goes to the base of the transistor, turns the transistor on, and uh, that LED is on. So the top of the switch is always connected. That's the main takeaway. The bottom of the switch is always connected. It's separated top to bottom. When I press the switch, that LED turns on now. And uh, so we will do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit to uh, look at how it works. So now, at the uh, top here, we have an LED protected by a 220 ohm resistor. So the long lead, the anode, goes to the resistor because it goes to the positive side of the power supply. Short lead, the cathode, comes down one row. Right there. And we're going to take a 2N2222 NPN bipolar junction transistor. And doesn't look like I'll be able to get where you can read it. But in any case, there's three pins. Left pin is the emitter. Middle pin is the base. Right pin is the collector. If I turn it this way, now the collector is the top pin. Power is off, so I don't have to worry about short circuit or anything. Uh, top pin is the collector. That's where we're going to connect the LED. Short lead, the cathode, is where we're going to connect our emitter. So, if you don't know bipolar junction transistors terribly well, what this does is we control how much current flows through the transistor from collector to emitter by giving a signal to the base. Right now there's no signal. If I turn the power on, the LED would be off. So, we're going to take a uh, rectifier diode right here. And this is going to give us another diode drop. So, the base to emitter has a diode drop. And so this diode here, rectifier diode, blocks about 0.7 volts. So does the base to emitter. And so we are relying on those two diode drops. Now just like with the LED, this is polarized. The band right there, the stripe, whatever you want to call it, that has to be more negative when we want it to conduct. And uh, the other side more positive when we want it to conduct. So we're going to plug that in right there. And I already have the 100 or uh, 10,000 ohm resistor. Uh, right there and so we give the base a small amount of current it lets through a multiple amount of current from collector to emitter probably about 300 times so whatever current we want we probably want to give it at least one one hundredth of the current that we want through the transistor to make sure that it conducts and in fact you would actually use an even uh, closer safety margin. But the main takeaway is a small amount of current here is controlling a larger amount of current. The transistor is saturated. The brightness of the LED depends on the uh, resistance of the resistor and the diode drop of the LED. So now what I'm going to do quickly is make a not gate. So I can put this to the negative rail to the switch because the uh, positive side is coming through this resistor, 10 kilo ohm resistor, and now the current is being directed to ground, to the negative rail. So it makes it to this point. There's no reason for it to go through uh, actually two diodes. There's no reason for it to go through that. It will just go straight to ground. That's by far the easiest path. Uh, zero ohms of resistance. It's going to take all the current. So in any case, let's uh, pop this back out and put it one row below that jumper there. So that jumper comes from the switch. And again, we might as well do the, uh, actually, I need to leave that resistor there. I meant to grab this resistor. So this again is a 220 ohm resistor. Base will be there, collector there. We go up one more and we will add the LED again. This 220 ohm resistor is to the positive rail. So we put the long lead, the anode there, short lead, the cathode, we go down one row. 
right there. And we're going to add a transistor again. So the difference between this transistor circuit, other than the switch, is that it does not have a diode. It just has a jumper, which is basically making a direct connection, a node. And uh, we're going to put the jumper to the base of uh, the transistor there. It's also a 2N2222. And so what happens when I press this switch? It's still connected to this uh, diode here. But then we get a connection over here. So as I said before, we have a diode drop. It takes 0.7 volts to go through that diode. It also takes about 0.7 volts to go from base to emitter. Those diode drops add up to 1.4 volts. When I press this switch here, we only need 0.7 volts at the base of this diode. And so it's going to basically conduct freely once it has 0.7 volts across it. That will prevent any more than 0.7 volts from building up at this point, which is now also that point right there. This is all one node. Every uh, pin of the switch right now is uh, connected to this electrically and to that and over there. When I let go, now there is no connection top to bottom. And so now the node is just the uh, resistor, the top of the switch, and that diode there. So we have two diode drops, but this is practically infinite resistance between these two pins here. And so it's a by far easier path to go that way. And it's going to take all the uh, current and energy and bring it to ground in that direction. So that's how it works. Uh, pretty, It's really simple. And I, I spent a while trying to figure out how to do something like this. And every once in a while I forget that I figured it out. And uh, sometimes like two times I, I figured it out and forgot that I figured it out. And that's one reason why you should have a collection of uh, schematics. And you can just kind of flip through, see what you, what you thought of before or what other people have thought of that you could find practical in circuits and stuff. And I actually wanted this for uh, charging series capacitors. And I have done a video where I was able to charge series capacitors. And I didn't make a schematic, though. I'd have to watch the video and uh, figure it out. It's easier to read schematics once you know how to read schematics. And uh, uh, before you learn how, they seem confusing. But once you know how, it'll be a whole lot easier to see this circuit in schematic form than what you see here. And so definitely learn schematics if you haven't done so lately. You'll be really glad you did. You can just uh, find schematics everywhere and build circuits from them. So I rambled on for a while. Hopefully you still enjoyed uh, the video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.